Um, if during the talk uh, you have any questions or comments, please add them to the chat. Your chat is located at the bottom, um, has a little bubble, just add that there. Uh, and I think we're ready to get started. So like I said, you, you see this really beautiful logo here. You're all very intrigued. I know it's, it's gonna, you probably have seen this before though. You probably know this project well. If you're in Memphis, you definitely have heard about this. So our uh, speaker today is Dr. Karen Golightly. And um, I'm so glad you're here to tell us everything you know and love about Pain Memphis. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to tell you a little bit, tell you a little bit about Karen, um, because Karen does a lot of many things. Um, she is a director and co-founder of Pain Met Fest, which has been holding annual pain festival since 2015. She is also a writer and an associate professor of English and chair of the literature and languages department at Christian Brothers University. She lives in Cooper Young with her three children and one very naughty dog named B. Is it B or Bay? B. Hey. Mm -hmm. B. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. Um, so, yeah. Yes. So um, thank you for being here and let's uh, welcome Karen with our very uh, quiet clap. <laughs> the floor is yours, Karen. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I really appreciate you guys having me. This is super fun and I love talking to all different sorts of people in Memphis who, some, believe it or not, some people who haven't heard of Paint Memphis, even though we've been around for six years. Um, this year will be our seventh uh, festival. Um, so before 2015, I really got interested in, um, do, in public art because I traveled a lot for work and for vacation and for fun and, Everywhere I went, I took pictures of street art and people were like, I don't, why are you doing that? And it was graffiti and murals and sculptures and all sorts of pieces. But it's sort of, for me, it's sort of like how people go to the beach or whatever and you take a picture of a sunset because you want to either remember that moment or you want to remember how beautiful it was and capture it because it's temporal, right? It's going away, right? It's not going to stay there. Um, even though tomorrow there's going to be another sunset, right? But we still want to capture that and, and that feeling. And so that's how I felt about um, public art. I wanted to, I, public art is, doesn't stay there forever. Um, and even if it is, you know, commissioned and it is absolutely um, supposed to be there, still over time, eventually it will wear away. So wherever I go, I try to um, spend a lot of time, much to my kids' dismay, I think probably, especially when they were younger, I would drag them everywhere um, in every city and find all sorts of street art to take pictures of. But when I came back to Memphis, there was just not much here at the time. So I spent about three years from 2012 to 2015 talking to the city of Memphis about letting us have some space. And I coordinated with, um, a, a group of people called Paint Lewis in St. Louis. And every year they paint their, um, their flood wall down to, it's just like ours. It's on the Mississippi, it's the same as ours, but theirs goes for miles and miles and miles. And they paint that every single year. Um, and people, come, all kind of people come in, graffiti people, muralists, all kind of people come in um, for like a weekend, it's usually Labor Day weekend and they um, paint all their spaces on both sides of the wall. And I was like, how did you get the city to let you do that here? You know, that nobody's really listening to me. So um, I got a lot of tips from them and went um, through some of the people they recommended through the St. Louis city government who connected me with people in, um, in Memphis because I didn't really, I knew some people, but I didn't really know who to go to because nobody had ever done this, right? So, um, so it took me three years and partnering with the Greater Memphis Greenland to convince them that, that painting over graffiti in beige was not the way to go, even though they still do that, was not really the way to go. But if you painted murals or if you painted graffiti that you gave people the time and space to do, it would be A, really beautiful and B, people normally don't paint over that, right? They're sort of a street code. And so I started, so they gave us our first spot in 2015, which was, oh, and of course now I can't, now I can't move my screen. There it is. They gave us this little bitty wall. Um, 
in 2015 over on Chelsea and it was a flood loss. So although the numbers are covered up, you can see on here, right here where they had these flood well numbers. And this was a flood well that had never been used for flooding. Um, it had been built and then it, and it only went a third of a mile and it never continued really. I mean, it went a little bit further down the other end but really more as a, um, a block from the land to the, um, street Chelsea's on the other side of the street and they're like you can only paint the inside of this where the green line is going to go um which still is not quite there yet but they're working on that and so they gave us this and it was great um and we needed like maybe a step ladder or something very small um and we were not a 501c3 at this time and people just donated all sorts of paint so we could prime it and um we did fundraisers and raised some money for spray paint to give to the artists because we they all volunteer their time. And so we didn't want um, them to have to pay for everything. So some of the works that came out of this were, um, this is Bird Cat, who you probably know. And this is a piece he was working on. And this is how it ended up in the end. This is one of the pictures of it. And you probably know his art now. He is national and travels all over the world and is a professional artist. and has like, you know, even little, little plastic, um, I don't know what they're called, but little plastic dolls of his work made around. And so, and prints of his work and stickers and all sorts of things. So that's one of our artists. We wanted some diversity um, as well though. And some of the things reflected the area in which we were painting and what was around there. Um, this is from Jamon Bullock, who you probably also know, who is a professional artist as well. And a lot of these people were sort of beginning their careers as muralists at this time. And so they would come and paint. And this wall became, and you can see the numbers right here. Um, we had to preserve those numbers no matter what, because the Corps of Engineers who actually own this wall were like, we have to see the numbers. It's not really that pertinent for this wall since it literally doesn't function as a flood wall. However, we honored what they wanted. Um, and so um, we had about 35 artists come this first year. Um, that's really all we had. And we felt like it was huge. It was huge. It was a third of a mile long and it was between um, six and eight feet tall. So it was a lot of space for us, especially during our first year. Um, this is a really famous guy from um, Asheville named Patch Whiskey. And he does, um, and so he's kind of representative of all sorts of people who came and it was absolutely word of mouth and social media who came from all over the country. Um, this is a girl who was local then, but this was her very first mural. Um, her name is Felipe and uh, she kind of came in late, um, but we really wanted to have all sorts of people um, who could paint this year. Um, this piece is kind of two stories on this. This piece was done by a guy from Mexico who came to me during the festival. And this one spot was open and he was trying to say to me in Spanish, can I paint that spot? But I was not understanding him because I do not speak Spanish and he didn't speak much English at all. Didn't speak in, any English really at that time. And he, um, his name is uh, Francisco Gonzalez. And he was like, can I, can I just paint that wall? And I was like, that guy's coming. And unfortunately that guy wasn't able to make it. He had had, he was from St. Louis and he had had some sort of catastrophe in his car broken down. And so he couldn't make it. Um, so, but he didn't tell me. So I made the guy wait till noon. And I finally got a Spanish interpreter to come in to tell him that. And then when he painted, he painted this beautiful piece. Um, unfortunately, um, and this was our first year. So it took some learning. We used a dumpster to throw the empty spray cans away that was located right next to this area. Um, actually on, on the land. And so we used a dumpster to throw the cans away and somebody had left a little bit of green in one of the cans. Uh, most, all the other cans were like empty. And, um, and so some kids came along and they um, sprayed over this piece, which really rarely ever happens, but um, they ended up telling us who did it, the kids did, and, and we had it repaired. Um, you can see it again here on this butterfly. And they did this as well. Now this was done by a guy named Brad Wells and Brad was sort of our, he's from Nashville and he was sort of our um, local 
um, on the site reporter at the time because he was here from the, it was, this was a weekend in June or July, which is, we changed when we have the um, festival now. We do this every year and we changed it completely because way too hot. I mean, people were sitting in ice chests this first year. And so we decided that we needed to change it to October, which is when we have it now, so that it wouldn't be quite so hot and everyone wasn't gonna heat stroke. But Brad came in from Nashville and he stayed from like Wednesday to Wednesday when his wife was like, you have to come home. He's got two kids. And so, um, but he came and he just ended up talking to everybody, super friendly guy, collaborated with everybody. Um, afterwards, and this is one of the great things about Paint Memphis, um, when he went back, all these people went to Nashville and did projects with him and he did projects elsewhere with them as well. And then unfortunately over Thanksgiving that year, he had a heart attack and he died. Um, so one of the things we did was we repaired this mural and then we coated it with anti-graffiti coating so that nobody could paint over it. Or if they did, you can just spray wash it off. Um, so the next year, this is 2016, they actually let us paint the other side of that wall. And this is a picture of Brad um, that Jamon Bullock did again um, to commemorate Brad's life. And this is exactly what he looked like. He was this hilarious, funny guy. Um, and he had camped there overnight. And so he was always on site when he came. And so um, this is just kind of one of the ways in which we have this collaboration between artists and them sharing techniques and sharing their stories and then working with you know, each other on future projects. So 2016, we doubled our capacity. Um, this time we had like 70 to 75 artists and we painted, this again is on the Chelsea side. We painted um, both sides of the property. Um, again, this is, these are two guys from uh, Nashville um, who are in a crew called a paint crew, which is not a gang, but a paint crew called TM, which is Thoughts Manifested. Um, and they wanted to do something reminiscent of the river since Chelsea runs right down to the river um, and the catfish there. Um, and then in 2017, I was like, I don't want to paint over any of these. Like in 2016, we had to paint over the first wall, most of the first wall in order to do to double our capacity. And I was like, this is killing me. I can't do that again. So I was like, we're gonna move. So we moved over to Willette and Lamar. Um, and this was probably the most interesting year we had. Um, this is, um, runs, this is the first time we combined city property, which was an underpass right there at, um, between Central and Lamar on Willette. And then we also coupled that with a bunch of private property, including, uh, the Outtown uh, Skate Park. Um, but all that's privately owned with several buildings that were surrounding it. Um, and this was our first sort of foray, foray into private and public city owned property. So again, we have, we always have a big Asheville sort of, um, um, uh, people who come in, Asheville artists who come in and travel in to paint. And this is Catherine Crawford. Um, and, um, part of the story about this is that she had had a terrible wreck and she was out in the Southwest. And these were the kind of images in her recuperation that she uh, sort of started drawing um, when she was sick. She said, you know, I felt like Frida Kahlo, all I could do was paint and draw. And so this was sort of her nod um, in that way to Georgia O'Keeffe and Frida Kahlo and this whole sort of Southwest look. Um, so she painted this, and I'll tell you more about this painting a little bit later. Jules Muck, who is based in, um, in San Diego came in and um, painted this Elvis, which caused a whole lot of uh, conversation, shall we say? Because some people were greatly offended by this and some people loved it. Um, and um, this is a guy from New Orleans who came in. Um, they were trying to do some local art. The theme for this year, we have a theme every year and the theme for this year was Memphis, the city of colors to show the diversity of our city. Um, this is a pretty famous guy from LA named Ward Smith. Um, and then um, he actually brought his girlfriend at the time, Meg Zaney, um, who did this one. These are right next to each other, who did this one. That's a picture of her. And then this was on another wall. These were, uh, this is Jamon Bullock 
and a flight of fancy here and some other people down here that are local and not local um, as well. And then this is Tunky Berry who did our, um, our logo, the one you were just looking at. And this was his second mural he'd ever painted. And now he paints murals all over town. I'm sure you've seen them. And some of his style has changed slightly, but he is completely talented and can paint just really anywhere. We painted almost every surface that was already painted. We, we have a rule um, on um, buildings that are um, part of the National um, Historic districts or registry in which we do not paint on them unless they've already been painted. So any of the raw brick is not painted on, un, un, again, unless it has been painted before. And so that's um, how this came about. Um, this is particularly important for us because we want to preserve the character of buildings um, and not just cover them up with something that destroys the historic value of, of a building. Um, these are some others from that time as well. Um, this is Saki one. This is Megan Kelly. And here I'll go back. Just let's see if I can go back. So Megan Kelly was coming with her boyfriend, whose name is Dustin Spagnola. Again, they both were coming from um, uh, Nash uh, from Asheville, sorry, North Carolina, and they wanted to do a piece together to collaborate. And this happens all the time. We have couples collaborate or crews that collaborate or just high schools that do things together, all kind of people do collaborate together. But unfortunately they broke up like two weeks before they came, but nobody told me. So I had them on this one big wall and we got here, they got here and Megan was like, yeah, no, I'm not painting with them. We just broke up, this is not good. So she was like, I'm gonna go paint around the corner. And I was like, okay. So we had this space open and she did and it was fine. And she created this beautiful bright piece, um, but, and you can see CBU was one of our sponsors that year, but Dustin was really torn up about this and he created this zombie, which became this huge um, sort of centerpiece of discussion about art in Memphis. Um, it also spurred on um, a bunch of city um, council talks that you may or may not have heard about in which they wanted it removed. Um, they decided to remove it. Unfortunately, this was on private property. This was not part of the underpass and the owner did not want it removed. And um, according to federal law, you, you can't remove it without the owner's permission. Um, and in fact, according to federal law, it's called the um, Vera Artist Rights Act of 1985. If you give an artist permission to paint on your wall, um, then regardless, if you don't like it, you cannot paint over it or tear down the wall or the building or whatever, unless you have the artist's permission. So the owner of this building did not give his permission to tear it, to um, remove it and neither did the artist. So the city decided to, and I'm gonna go back, decided to paint over ones that they found offensive. Oh, no, I can't go back anymore for some reason. Well, hang on. I think I clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. They decided to go paint over some they thought were offensive, right? They thought this one was offensive. They thought this one was offensive. And of course they thought the zombie one was offensive. Um, and they thought there was a, I don't have a picture of it, but they thought there was a, it was just right by, right during, right before Halloween. And there was a skeleton holding a jack-o-lantern. Um, they thought that was offensive. And so, and as a matter of fact, they decided I personally was a devil worshiper because I considered these art as opposed to, I don't know, sin or something. Um, and so um, the best thing that came out of this is this went national and Paint Memphis got so many, uh, so much recognition. Um, it's partly because one of our council members said, if it ain't Jesus, it shouldn't be on a wall. Um, and so um, nobody had painted Jesus with Paint Memphis before, so I guess none of that really applied um, um, to any of our works. But um, but that went sort of national, and we went we ended up getting a ton of recognition, and all these artists who wanted to come the next year. Unfortunately, in the middle of that, they sent out um, a, um, a whatever a program in which they decided to paint over the offensive murals. And so they sent their crews out to paint. 
and this was one of them, the Elvis was another one. But unfortunately, there was some miscommunication and the crews ended up painting this one. And this one, which clearly they didn't think were offensive, and about 12 others. And after um, about, oh, this went on for years, um, I happened to play soccer right beside there. So I would ride by and I ended up stopping them. I was like, you're, you have to stop and, 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 you know, call your supervisor. These are not the right murals you're supposed to be painting over. And they said, okay. And then the next day they were out there painting again. And then, so I went on social media and tagged Mayor Strickland and he stopped it because those clearly were the wrong ones. But unfortunately the damage had been done. And about that time, um, the five point suit got settled and um five points is a well was it doesn't really exist anymore but it was a um, location in brooklyn with all these abandoned buildings and the owner gave permission for anybody to go there and paint and so um a bunch is featured in movies it's really famous um it's been in all kind of videos and movies and all sorts of media and photography shoots and lots and lots of things have been there um, but he sold it and, or no, sorry, in order to prepare to sell it, he painted over all of it. And so the artist sued him for violation of the um, 1985 Vera Rights, uh, Vera Act. And um, they uh, went to court and won. They won like $5.6 million because even after they'd gone to court the first time, the owner of the building said, well, I'll just tear it down after he had painted it all white. So he tore it down and the judge was like, seriously, you violated all this. You have to pay this money to all these artists. Um, so that had just come out when this happened here for Paint Memphis. So I just emailed the head, my dad's a lawyer. I sent it to him first. I was like, dad, this happened and here's the law. What do you think? And he goes, you know, I think it's, I think it's valid. I don't know how it applies to a city, right? As opposed to a private property owner. So I sent it to Eric Baum, who was the lead lawyer on the Five Points case and with pictures and within 30 minutes, he called me on the phone and was like, you have a case, we'll take it. I was like, we don't have any money. And he goes, we will just take money off the back end. We're not gonna you know, ask you for any retainers or anything. And, and so I did a bunch of research for it and the artist sued, Paint Memphis did not sue because we didn't create the art, it's an artist's rights. And so the artist sued and they were awarded $250,000 from the city because of their mistake. Now I had given them a copy of the Vera rights, including their lawyer in a city council meeting. Um, so before any of this happened. So they knew um, in preparation for painting over it, they knew what the federal law was. Unfortunately, they didn't follow it. So um, these artists, um, including some of the ones that they decided they might paint over like the cow's head, or the Elvis, they were awarded, it was about 12 or 13 artists were awarded $250,000 um, minus legal fees. I should say that because that was a big chunk <laughs> um, for this. And so that was, I didn't want it to end that way. I wanted to continue to work with the city. Um, but unfortunately, we aren't able to do that at this point just because of this, this issue. Um, okay, let me move forward a little bit. Okay, so the next I'm sorry, this was in the same year. Sorry. Um, so one of the thing that um, is interesting about some of the things they found to be offensive is that um, this is a mural by Lauren Esta and you can see it says leave your mark and flex your hustle. But at the top, it says Memphis as luck, right? But you can probably imagine what that's a play on. Um, and no one found that offensive at all. Um, so that is one of the, no one ever even noticed that it said anything at the top. They just noticed the other two things that it said. So that's kind of one of the, it says Asta over here because that's her name, Lauren Asta. So that's one of the things that's sort of interesting about that whole situation that occurred is some of the things they didn't notice. This is another one that got painted over as well by accident. Um, and so we moved again in 2018, and this was the 50th anniversary of, of um, Martin Luther King's assassination in Memphis. And so we moved to MLK. 
um, 7-Eleven Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. And this was just a picture of the build, one of the buildings before. We went back to using all private property owners, but this was one owner, which was a dream, who owned two really big buildings with a bunch of walls around it that gave us about 35,000 square feet, which is about what we do between 35 and 40,000 square feet every year. Um, so again, you can see this is a historic building. And so we were really specific with the artists what they could and could not paint on. And they could only paint on what had already been painted on. So um, this is what it looked like in the end. This is the same building, but that picture was taken on this end down here, those three. But you can see that a lot of them just painted the bottom, some painted the top where the plywood is, but nobody painted on any of the unpainted pieces there. And again, these people came from all over and this is, I'll show you more later, but all different kinds of people painted here. Um, again, um, this is a guy from Florida. This is a guy from Knoxville who painted this in three hours, which is pretty amazing. This guy Zulu um, painted four different pieces for us this weekend because he's also very fast. This is Megan Kelly again. If you remember, you saw her um, her, her earlier uh, a few minutes ago. That was, she's the one who broke up with her boyfriend and she came back the next year as did he. Um, this is a local artist named Juan Rojo who did, it, who did this piece with his students. Um, this is a Houston high school piece. Um, they've been working with us for years and have done a great job. Um, again, this is the girl who did the um, skull head, right? Um, Catherine Crawford. And this is Eric Carbeling, or Carbeling, I think that's how he said. It's so funny. This guy shows up. He's never painted with us before. And he shows up on a scooter, which is what he used the entire time he was here to get around, to go buy paint, to go do anything he needed to do. He just had this scooter that he rode, um, an electric, electric scooter that he rode the whole time. He's totally, you know, handled it all by himself. It was great. Um, this is a woman that's from um, Vermont and this was one of the first murals she'd ever done. And now she does it for a living. Um, and this is the guy, this is Aretha Franklin. This is the guy, Dustin Spagnola, who did the zombie. Um, so because this was Memphis themed, he wanted to do Aretha Franklin. And at the bottom of this, it says, uh, this one's for the kids, right? Because he wanted to, the whole point was people thought the zombie was too awful for children. Um, this is Saki One, and you saw a picture of him earlier when he had painted a kind of a purplish shaded girl's face. This is right next to Aretha Franklin. And then um, this is one of the, tall pieces that we did where we had to get bucket trucks out. So things got a little bit logistically crazier and a little bit more difficult. And we started using bucket trucks and scaffolding and lifts and all kind of equipment in order to try to paint every paintable surface on these spaces. Um, and so um, you can see the bottom is a graffiti crew. And if you can tell here, uh, one of their main people is named Camel. So that's a camel. It's kind of hard to tell behind that um, post there. But so this was a whole graffiti crew and up top was um, individual artists. And then you can't see it, but there were even more pieces on the roof up here as well. So um, we really try to, and this is Lauren Asta again, the girl who did um, the Flexure Hustle one. Um, so one of the things we did with this one was we had to coordinate between quite a few different people and, and building owners. So the bill, people who own this one, this was a trans, it still is a transmission shop. And they were like, you can paint on our wall, but we want you to do something that related to vehicles. And so these people came up with a school bus and, and um, this is not Rosa Parks, but they wanted it to be any African-American person who has ever been, um, discriminated against and have it represented by the school bus, by the bus. Um, again, there's some more sort of um, MLK uh, nods and portraits as well by local artists and non-local artists. All right, so this goes to 2019 and this, um, this was done at the Lamar um, Theater and surrounding buildings, like seven or eight surrounding buildings, which is over at Lamar and 
almost right by um almost by right by Payne's. So I think it's Lamar and it's not Roland, it's not that far down, but it's right almost by McLean and Lamar. And so one of the things that um, the building owner wanted us to do was to keep the things that we painted, and it's really hard to see this one because it's, anyway, keep the things we painted on this, oh, I can't go back, sorry, y'all, on this building to be um, Memphis oriented. So in this particular building, all of it was Memphis themed, Memphis icons. Um, and again, here are some of the other ones that were painted. And again, we had like six different buildings that we used for this one. So it's this whole entire area um, of, of uh, town that's been sort of painted on abandoned buildings mostly. Um, some of them were functioning. Um, again, um, these are some of those classics. Uh, this this is the front of that building that you can see um, and well sorry the front and the side and again these are some Memphis icons and one of the great things that happened was um, on the Sunday after the event a woman was walking by and we were out there cleaning up and and she stopped in front of this mural and she was crying and I was like are you okay is everything okay because I was standing across the street taking a picture, of course, but also um, I was cleaning up some of these barrels that were out there because that's my job too, and some garbage. And um, and she said, yeah, this is my church. I'm home. I'm home now. And she was just like, thank you so much for doing this, which really meant a lot to us. We also had some Native American art as well to honor the Trail of Tears here in Memphis. Here's some others from that year. And again, some others. These are some South American artists that came in and painted for us. And this is 2020. Um, and I'll be a little quick since I feel like I'm running out of town at a time. But in this one, we moved over to North 2nd Street, North Front and North 2nd Street. Um, and so if you want to go over there, if you go look on our Facebook page, we have pinned a map as to the best way for you to do this. It's the first time we did that. And um, these are some of the pieces that came out of that. Some of these people had never been to Paint Memphis before. And again, some of them have been here since the very beginning. Um, and so um, we had some amazing pieces. This brewery came in at the last minute and, and it was completely painted white. And one of the artists wanted to paint on it and it ended up getting like 90% painted all over it. Um, but again, here are some of the pieces. Some of them are more uh, Memphis oriented and some of them are sort of people's own things that they wanted to paint as well. Um, uh, this wall is at 700 North Front. Um, you can see this piece is down there and this was painted by um, a guy from Salt Lake City who is um, a Mormon and he's also a Pacific Highlander which was an interesting combination and um, and although this was supposed to mostly all be abstract and very colorful, um, there was a, it came in from each end. It was like black on each end and then very colorful in the middle. And so um, he wanted to honor, this is a picture of his daughter and he wanted to honor his culture as well as the theme of, of that wall. Um, these are two memorial portraits. Um, this is Nels on the side and Nels from 2017 was, he, he lived in Atlanta, but he was an integral part of Paint Memphis and he helped with um, artist relations and scaffolding and garbage and everything you can think of. He was sort of my day, weekend of, he was the bucket truck guy. Um, he was my weekend of right-hand man. Unfortunately, he was killed by a hit and run um, accident. And so we did, um, uh, and this was earlier in the summer, and so we did a memorial portrait for him. And the story of this one, this is um, a guy named Eric Jansen, who was one of my dear friends, um, who fell off of a building in 2017 and died as well. He was a photographer, and um, a guy came in who did not know me or did not know him and started painting this, and I went out to bring him his lunch one day, and um, I looked at the wall and I was like, what are you painting? And he said, I think you know. And I was like, um, who, who is that person there? And he was like, 
can you not tell yet? And I was like, are you painting Eric? And he said, yes. And I was like, how did you know? And he said, well, I did some research. I saw a video on, on with you and you talked about him and what a huge influence he was on you and on Paint Memphis. And he was, I mean, he was this big supporter and was always telling me, you know, don't stop, you know, keep pushing on your dreams. You just got to work harder at it and you can make it happen. And his whole thing was live a great story. Um, so um, he sort of um, really, really was my backbone in terms of getting me get um, paint Memphis off the ground. And he was about six, seven. So he would paint all the high stuff when we needed to have things buffed. And so a great lot, both of these men were great losses to the paint Memphis community. And so um, we, those were two of our uh, memorial murals this year. Um, and so we're very proud of those as well. Um, and these are a few of the other ones. Um, um, we are up, we're on North Front and then North Second, but we're also up at Grand City Brewery, which is at 76 Waterworks, as well as 7th Avenue, which is just around the corner. So we're really spread out over a mile this year. And we did that because of COVID. Um, we did it over the course of eight weeks because of COVID as opposed to one weekend, because um, we needed to spread everyone out in terms of um, space and um, timing so we could all be safe. Uh, fortunately, um, most painters wear respirators, and so those are really great for keeping everybody safe, but we, of course, made everyone wear masks as well. Um, and I think that's my last one. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop sharing so we can talk. Um, Thank I will you, just say, Karen. Oh, I will just say just one more thing, which is that um, our theme is building community one wall at a time. And so what we really try to do is to um, not just coordinate artists with each other, but organizations and schools and youth groups and businesses and um, all sorts of people within the community, volunteers, people who would never even think about, um, you know, being involved in an arts organization. We welcome them in. There's a place for everybody and there's something for everyone to do. We have an all volunteer staff. We have an all volunteer artist. And, um, and we really um, are proud of our co new community outreach and how well we have worked with community organizations in order to, and neighborhoods in order to um, make sure that they have what they want. Um, you know, I want, we want them to have, um, a representation of their neighborhood. We also want to bring art to people who may not ever enter an art gallery or a museum because um, there are a lot of people, especially in Memphis out there, who unfortunately do not come to the Dixon even though they should. Um, and um, we want to make sure everybody gets to see art. So part of this is to have it in paths where buses run where there are green lines and bikes run and also in um, what seem to be mostly disinvested neighborhoods in which people in some ways have sort of forgotten those areas to really bring attention to them. So our projects have really helped. We go in and clean up the whole area before we start. So it's really, and that is maintained partly by um, Clean Memphis. They've been a great partner with us, but also by um, our board also goes back in and maintains it. And then the neighbors start become investing again into their own neighborhood and keeping it beautiful and keeping it clean. So, okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is amazing. I mean, I, you know, I knew a little bit about Paint Memphis, but really this is, I mean, and the, showing the images and it's just, you know, it really makes us all want to go and get in our cars and go find these murals. So make sure you check that Facebook page, find that map for sure. Um, there's many, I have many questions, but I'm going to go with the questions that are in the chat okay. first. Um, let me see. Okay, hold on. Let me put the dog down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, first question is, uh, if you said this at the beginning, I'm sorry, but here's a question. When a property owner gives permission for a mural, do they have any right to approve the image that will be painted? or yeah. did they grant carte blanche, blanche? Well, it depends. So some people don't mm -hmm. care and they're like, yes, come have paint Memphis. And we work sometimes with the same people over and over property owners. 
other people, like for example, the people that own the um, the transmission place, they wanted to see what was going to be right. done, and so we submitted a drawing for that. So it just sort of depends. Like we had, we did a bunch of stables um, down on North Second, and I said, if everybody does horses, will you be okay? And he's like, yes. So almost everybody did horses, except for at the end when a guy who actually lived in part of it, he's a big um, mushroom forager. And he was like, can you put mushrooms on mine? And so we said, yes. And so we just made the colors flow. And I, I curate things appropriately so that they match um, some theme in the neighborhood or a color scheme of, um, right. you know, that goes along or maybe the, you know, if the owner wants something specific, um, we don't necessarily, um, I mean, you, we don't have them give this, I mean, like, I just put it out there. Does anybody want to paint horses? All artists want to paint horses. Okay. <laughs> and then they, you know, people signed up to do that building, right? And so it's been a really great sort of project. Right. Do no, you I have to write that, like, do you have to have this in writing? Like you make contracts with these owners? Yeah, um, I do an MOU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. So we try to have it left up for a year is what our agreement is. And all of our artists okay. know that. And they also all, they now they waive their VERA rights. Um, so we don't end up in any more lawsuits because it's way too time consuming. All right, uh, Paul is asking, he's saying, wow, these are wonderful. And then he's asking, are you familiar with the murals on the flood wall in St. Genevieve, Missouri? I am not, but I'm sure they're the Mississippi okay. River probably. And I'll I be- wish you'd all look them up. Yeah. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, Patricia is saying, what is the name of that law again? It's the Visual Artist Rights Act of 1985. Might be 87. I think it's 85. Okay. And then uh, Paul asks, do you cover all the murals with the saving paint you mentioned? Like, I'm, I'm assuming after your, the year later or? No, we move do you now. save? You move. Okay. We move because we, um, yeah. we, I couldn't bear it. Like we did it one year and I was like, I was about to cry the whole time we were painting over them. And so I was like, we can't, I can't, I can't emotionally do that. Anymore. So I find a new location every year. Yeah. Where do you store this stuff? I mean, um, mm -mm. my <laughs> <laughs> behind you, <laughs> my there's a lot of paint in here, even right now here, I'll just show you. I'm still waiting on one person to come in from this year. So there's a lot of paint in my house, but also I have this poor little shed mm -hmm. that is overflowing of stuff. Um, we will probably eventually need to rent a space. Right, but right now it's kind of between two different houses, but yeah. That's cool. Um, I have one question that I actually wrote down in my notebook. It's like, how do you find these artists? Do they come to you? Are you like overwhelmed with requests or you're like, hmm? I need an artist. How does it well, work? So um, we do a call for artists mm -hmm. and they just, we put it out on social media and our web, I mean, our email list and our website and they, they just apply, but they hear about us from their friends. So friends will bring friends often. And then also um, they hear about us on like so many people applied after the yeah. zombie debacle that, um, I mean, people like from all over the world applied because they wanted to come and support Paint Memphis in that way to prove that, you know, censorship is is not a good thing and, right. that, um, and that people should be allowed to paint what they wanted. Now, we set up these guidelines so that um, to honor building owners and to, um, and these were set up when we were over in Chelsea, the neighborhood contributed and they wanted no nudity, no drugs, no profanity. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, no guns. And then um, the next building owner after the zombie one said, can we have no zombies? I'm like, sure, we can have no zombies. It's not a problem. So we had no zombies and nobody cared. Zombie was, the zombie was awesome. <laughs> I, I have to say, I, it, I, I don't know. I think it was, I think kids see worse than that on TV. Oh, well, no. Um, you. <laughs> so, you know, I had like a year ago or so, this is the story that, that, that I saw. Um, I'm from Colombia, from Bogota, and they were having oh. their their very huge art something in Bogota. They were doing it in Bogota that year, and one of the murals that was accepted and was through a, a private, I guess, uh, place. It was downtown, and it was one of the walls that was next uh, belonged to the uh, 
Language Institute, the American Language Institute, Colombo Americano. And so they had something inside and they had something outside and they, this very well-known uh, artist named uh, Power Paula painted this mural with another artist and it was about that time where there was a lot of political things going on here in the United States. And what she was painting and depicting, you know, had, you know, Donald Trump, had a couple of things, right? And the Language Institute, to, like a day after they were done, went by and painted over it. So you see the guy with a little roller. And so the artists are looking at it, recording it live. And so it created this whole thing and I was terrified you know one of my best friends was the director of that entire art show and it was intense and I told him about you know what was happening here and it just made me think about those rules and those laws that protect public art and artists and sometimes it's not that clear oh no it's not and I don't know um there's a big Columbia um, connection by the way with um uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi, and then some of those people came up painted for Paint Memphis, but um, with Eric Stone. But regardless of that, I don't know what the laws are in uh, Columbia, and it may be, again, it's federal for here, so I don't know what it is there. But usually, even if you are the building owner, you cannot, if you've given permission, you cannot go and paint back over it. But I just don't know internationally much about that. It would be good to know. But yeah, no, it's it just, it just it's something that Mm -hmm. I, to me, it's just something that happens everywhere. It's like when you yes. are having public art murals, it's going to happen. I mean, you have to be ready. I, it's just... It happens everywhere. And sometimes that mural gets more famous because it gets covered up. I mean, this happened in Ireland. Right? So in this case, what happened is because the process of painting this mural has had been so public. It had been publicized. People came by with brushes and painted what they remember it oh, was really? and so they re like the community people painted it again it's That's weird yeah. so that that whole part of the process is amazing you know i love that karen it's kevin sharp here i just wanted to jump in because i am a huge fan of paint memphis and i have the pleasure of driving by the willette and lamar murals every day on my commute to work and, and I don't think anyone was as deeply offended when the city vandalized those Willette murals than, than I was. It was, just, it was just a disgrace what happened. And to, to, just to speak to the effectiveness, effectiveness of your work, it's, you know, those murals, those murals went untouched for the longest time. And as soon as they were painted over, the graffiti came back. Absolutely. You they know, it's, um, it is, and they're, uh, and particularly the, um, you know, the works on Lamar, which, you know, have, you, you know, are respected and, you know, not vandalized, um, are just marvelous. They're in their, in their variety and in their beauty and in the way they resonate with the, with the city. I mean, they're just so, they're just so smartly conceived and execute and brilliantly executed. And I hope that your relationship with the city gets mended somehow because there are plenty of city properties that would benefit from the work of, of Paint Memphis. So keep it, keep it up. Thank you so much. I agree. And go down, wait till you see North Second and North Front. It's because we did it over such a long period. It is the best we've ever done. It's amazing. I was just, every mural, I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. It's crazy. It's so good. Thank you so much. That's very cool. Um, we have one, I think we have time for a couple more questions. We have another question up here um, from Richard. Tim Bully, what is your vision for Paint Memphis, say, 10 years from now? Well, I'm hoping that someone else will want to take it over <laughs> 10 years from now, because then I'm going to be old and hopefully retired um, and tired of moving scaffolding all the time. But um, no, I would love for it. I mean, we're a 501c3, but I would love for it to sort of function 
um, a little more, oh gosh, I would say on its own or to have some, I've had a lot of people come in and talk to me about taking over and I would be a consultant or whatever, but they don't, then they've realized how much work it is. <laughs> They're like, well, maybe not. Um, and it's all volunteer. It's all a passion project for every single person involved. Nobody gets paid. So it is just something that I love to do. So in the future, I would like to have our own bucket trucks and cherry pickers and be painting on the, um, the Mississippi River flood wall, which I've been trying to get since 2012. So um, yeah, so people going up and down the river and people coming across the bridge can see some of the amazing art that we have here. So that's, I guess, that's sort of a sometime in between now and 10 years from now. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's a lot. You do a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you have a whole group here of supporters. So, well, you know, you. yeah. Let us know how we can help you. We definitely love the murals in any way we can promote them, either as for me personally or, you know, through the education department at the Dixon. Sure, no problem. Definitely. Thank you so much. Um, so we don't have any more questions at this point. Uh, just really thank you so much for uh, letting us know this project better and kind of inspire us to go see uh, public art and support it in any way we can. Um, hopefully uh, you can come back to a Munch and Learn soon yeah. and tell us more about it and how things are going. Uh, we definitely would love to see you here again. So thank you everybody for coming and, and spending this time with us and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Thank right. you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.